Hi everybody, it's uh, John Bout with another model in box of you. This is probably one of the strangest single engine fighters you've ever seen, um, let alone in pictorial fashion, but it's actually covered by a company called Heller, um, who did this aircraft in 172nd scale. It's actually the Heller 72nd scale Saab J21A. Yes, it's a Swedish Air Force aircraft. And um, there's a sub of mine called Bill in America who's actually a German man, a very nice fella, who has a really good friend of his who loves Swedish aircraft subjects. Um, so this is another one, probably one of the most unusual aircraft I've ever seen, because it's a twin boom pusher single engine single seat fighter. It actually entered service, uh, just a little bit of in history about this, there's not an awful lot of history to it. It actually entered service for the Swedish Air Force in 1945, I think it was December the 1st, 1945. And by the time the aircraft had it, all of its problems ironed out, the Saab J21A was actually in, in frontline service in 1946. But its short-lived career was finished by 1949 with the advent of the J29 Tunnen. Um, but some of these aircraft were relinquished to training duties, um, and they were used by the Swedish Air Force for some five or six years um, into the 50s for, for training and um, hack duties mainly. There is actually a, a, an aircraft remaining um, in a museum in Sweden, and you can model it on the later boxings of the Heller kit. We'll go into the Heller boxing history first of all. The kit was first released in 1980 and this was the first release boxing in the black borders this is actually the subject kit that i have a, a, a copy of which is great the first issue from heller um yeah not a lot to write home about this kit it's actually quite nice um but we'll go into that in the conclusions and when we see the parts and everything but 1980 this was the black border boxings from heller and in 1986 humbrol heller um, released this kit as well on a humbrol boxing offering um, and this was quite standard to have the image of the kit made up on the front of the box um, humbrol kits on as a whole generally were quite basic and simple but when they covered heller kits as this is a subject of one their kits actually went up a league for the rest of the range that they usually had um, so this was the Saab J21A humbrol heller release in 1986 then we have the later release boxings. This is 1994 when Heller changed their image for the boxings and they went to a borderless full window top cover. Um, I think these kits are opened at one end of the box rather than with flip top lids. Um, but these boxings and the next boxings are the kits that give you three or four options, one of which is um, a museum uh, a museum version, um, which I think is in... Well, the details are in the conclusions. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Linköping, I think it is. The Linköping Museum, the Swedish Air Force Museum there. So that's the 1994 Saab J21A from Heller. And then in sorry, 2011, you have the latest release boxing. Um, this, of course, is Heller, who have nothing to do with Humbrol Group when they were purchased and bought up with, um, with Hornby Productions Limited. Humbrol went away as a separate uh, company they actually became humbrol fabrications i believe um, and they they sold some tooled airfix tooling boxes in some of their kits but they are a company separate totally separate to their to their own now french company and that's the latest release 2011 release saab j21a right we'll leave you with a nice image here which this is a saab j21a um, i'm not sure whether this one's in flying condition or whether it's actually uh just a ground exhibit it would be quite interesting um, but there is one inside a museum in low keeping, uh, with, in Ling Coping, sorry, which um, is a subject of one of the later boxings. We'll just pan the camera down very quickly. Um, if this video won't take very long, I wouldn't have thought, because there's not a huge amount to this kit, and there's not a lot of options and costs to go through either. This is the uh, the first release boxing from Heller. Um, just show you some of the side panels here. You've got the two different variants which are uh, covered by this kit. Um, there's a little bit of information on the dimensions of the model there in metric. The serial number is number 261 from Heller. And yeah, repetition of what's on the other side. So quite, quite easy. Not an awful lot going on in the box. Flip top lid, as I said before. Um, what I'll do, I'll turn the... Uh, I'll turn the... 
box upside down so you can have a look at all of this in a minute actually let's just take this stuff out in the order i want to put it i want to cover it in the inbox of you which is quite yeah it's quite easy isn't it it's just um sorry i'm moving the camera a little bit here i didn't really want to do that um yeah the other path through in there that's lovely right so first of all we'll have a look at the instructions the instructions come in two parts You've got this part really, which is the safety instructions and general modelling advice. And then you've got the colour call-outs at the bottom there. It's a four-sized piece of paper and some general modelling advice and instructions. And the keynotes at the top, which tell you all the usual gumph, how to do it, when to do it, what to cement, what not to cement, choice of parts. And then you've got some more keys here, which are um, more sort of active things like... Um, <clears throat> Meld with a hot knife, cotton thread required, multiply this by two, file it down, drill it out, usual stuff, snap fit, all, all the rest of it. And at the bottom of this sheet you've got a complaint slip which is built into this piece of paper and it just gives you um, an address there to write off uh, parts which are missing in the kit, which is nice. So that's the first piece of paper, quite easy. The second piece of paper is an A4 sheet of paper that folds out into the colour guide and the instruction leaflet and the kit builds up in seven steps I'll just quickly browse through this very quickly the first step is basically the interior and sorry Bill there's no pilot with this guy with this plane um, as with a lot of companies um, the Heller are very very common not to put pilots in their models um, section two is a propeller assembly it's quite a comprehensive propeller there, I quite like that. Section 3 is the main undercarriage oleo legs and wheels, which have to be repeated. And then section 4, you're putting the tail boom assembly together. Section 5, you're putting the opposite tail boom assembly together. You fit the wheels into those from section 3, obviously. And then section 6, you're putting the fuselage halves together. And the fuselage halves together on this kit go together quite late. Because um, there's quite a lot going on for the airframe as well and everything else. But propeller assembly goes in at this point. Um, there's some air intakes and um, painting up of the uh, exhaust stubs there, some door wheels and the main undercarriage nose wheel leg there, um, which is quite nice. And then section seven, you're basically marrying everything up to the airframe and then fitting an air wheel in place and the cockpit canopy sections and that little fin there with the, with the one-piece elevator. Um, now, I'm guessing, as with all twin boom plastic kits and 70 second scale on all scales really this kit will probably require quite an extensive amount of lead in the nose um, and looking at the way this kit goes together you've actually got you see the section there in section six where you've got the cockpit interior well there's actually quite a large section of the nose cone that's going to be bereft of any form of detail and you're going to have a lovely space there to put quite a bit of weight and I would strongly advise at least two lumps of lead and pack it out with plasticine. That should probably suffice it quite nicely, I would have thought. The kit is very unusual. The aircraft is very unusual. And on the back of this, you've got a colour guide and paint call-out. And there's the two different variants there. Um, one of six of 2nd Squadron flo uh, Flag Flotilge and one from 9th of 1st Squadron Flag Flotilge. Both Swedish Air Force aircraft, of course, circa around about 1946. Um, the aircraft is principally, I'll probably paint it a bluey grey underside. I'm not sure what colour to paint the underside yet. I've got to have a look and see what colours um, are suggested by the community. But this kit is actually quite liked by the pro builders. They actually think it's not a bad offering. The decals. Now with early release Heller decals, they're nothing to write home about, but they're not that bad. The decal sheet um, is in quite good nick actually when you think it's a 1980 release. And the roundels, uh, the Swedish markings there, they look like the register's pretty good on them. And the actual colour of those A and D letters are quite good as well. Um, the actual quality of the decals are superb. There, there's very little ridge on these decals. The backing film seems to be very minimal. Um, but the A and D letters there, it, it, there is a little bit of yellowing going on behind the letters, so I might have to put these decals into the window for maybe a couple of weeks um, prior to putting this kit together. So that's the decals. Decals seem okay. Transparency parts. Let's just get the transparency parts out so you can see them properly, because there are there's four parts in total. 
two parts are on the screw, two have fallen off. You've got um, some sort of navigation light there, and there's also, I think that's the top, or it might, no, sorry, it's one of the sides of the canopy. The quality of the in, the uh, transparencies, as you can see, they're quite clear, aren't they? And they're, they're not that bad, but they're quite thick. So I'm imagining that the detail inside the canopy will probably be quite distorted. The windshield there, again, that's quite clear. It's a nice piece. Um, it looks like it's nicely moulded. And this is the other side of the canopy. Again, that's quite nicely moulded. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think that'll paint up nice. Um, but as I said, they are quite thick, so the, the detail through inside the canopy, you'll be able to see it, but it, it, it won't be crystal clear through that canopy piece. Now then, there are four what I call grey plastic sprues in the, uh, the, the writing out that I've got that I'll be reading out in a minute, but they're actually green-grey. An unusual colour, actually. It's almost like a khaki, drab, greeny colour. Weird grey colour. It's very unusual. Um, but the plastic itself, there's very, very little flash on these parts. They're actually moulded quite finely. Um, I'm not 100% sure the camera's going to pick up those fine raised panel lines. And yeah, it is raised panel lines, but it is 1980s issue. You expect that. But the thing is, the actual parts, are, they're actually really nicely rendered. The casting on them is actually really nice. And yeah, they are raised panel lines, but they're quite fine. And I don't think really that you're going to have to do anything with those at all. I think they'll paint up beautiful. The actual definition of the control surfaces are obviously fabric covered. They're quite nicely rendered as well, which is nice. And the tail boom, the tail, there's a little tiny bit of flesh on that rudder, but it's not a lot. It's, it's a very, very fine bit of flesh. Not very much at all. It'll clean up very easily. Instrument panels, you've got an instrument panel there. Um, there it is, nothing to write home about really. Not much detail, it's a bulletproof bulkhead, which is quite, it's okay, isn't it? Second sprue, you've got the lower wing <coughs> section here. Again, the actual panel lines on that are quite nicely rendered. They're not overdone. Don't think you're gonna have to do an awful lot with those either, they look quite good. And all these finely detailed parts, the pilot seat on this is actually, I think that would give an aftermarket part a run for its mother. Uh, money I think that's not bad at all is it quite like that the base for the cockpit interior it's not bad it's it's not as basic as I've seen some kits the nose wheel again that's quite nicely cast as well it's quite a nice piece and all these fine details are nicely cast on the sprue not too much flash anywhere on this kit is quite a nice breath of fresh air but I think that is the case with most heli kits I've built a couple of heli kits now um, and they seem to be quite bereft of flash, which is quite nice. Here are the fuselage halves. Um, exhaust stubs part of the parts, which is a shame, because I like to have them separate so I can put them into the airframe afterwards, but you can't win them all. Again, that uh, one-piece plane and rudder, uh, sorry, plane and elevator is quite nicely cast. That's quite a nice piece. The, uh, the propeller's quite nicely moulded as well. That's quite nice. And just to show you the interior of the fuselage, there's not much going on there, is there? But you should have plenty of room there to put that weight in that you're going to need for this kit. You're definitely going to need some serious weight because this thing will be a serious tail sitter otherwise. Not a lot on this piece. This is basically a copy of the uh, the last sprue with the addition of a few um, undercarriage struts there and the retainer for the propeller, which is pretty much run of the mill. Um, few doors on there so that's the parts the parts look quite nice on this kit and I can see why um, the pro builders like this kit they praise it quite a lot they actually say that the model has a lot going for it and um, there's not an awful lot you need to do to mess about with it to get a good result now then let's read the gump get this video closed up so you can um, you can get on with your lives that's <laughs> the model itself is a Heller Saab J21A its release date was 1980 and its serial number is numbers 261. It's moulded in 172nd scale. There are decals for two versions. The first is a Flig Fotilge 6th 2nd Squadron Swedish Air Force circa 1945-46. to And the second version is a Flig Fotilge 9th of the 1st Squadron Swedish Air Force 1946-48. to The dimensions of the kit are roughly 5.5 inches long by 6 point... Uh, sorry, 6 and a half inches span um, and it's about one and a half inches high on its undercarriage there are 40 parts on 
four grey green plastic sprues and four parts on a clear plastic sprue totaling 44 parts in, in total. Now the options and costs, there's not a lot of options and costs because obviously this kit is quite an unusual, um, the, the aircraft quite an unusual subject. But what is out there is quite interesting. In, in 70 second scale, AA models do a vac form kit of the Saab J21A. I've got no details about that. and There's no information on the internet about whether the pro builders like this kit. But as with most vac form models, they're usually quite accurate, but not very easy to assemble. The Heller's Saab J20A, uh, J21A retails for about £350 to £20, depending on the boxing and the quality of, and age of the kit. Uh, the special hobby Saab J21A and A21A retails for about four to eighteen pound. The special hobby also do a J21R, which is a Goblin jet powered version, and that retails between fourteen and forty six pound. In forty eight scale, Pilot Replicas do a J21A3, which, although it's quite high priced at seventy to eighty pound, it's probably one of the best options on the market. Conclusions. The Saab J21A is not only a fairly rare plane modelled by Heller, but it's also quite a nice kit of the aircraft too. It has raised panel lines, as you would expect from an 80s release, but they are quite finely moulded, and the control surfaces and flaps are nicely rendered as well. Later Heller boxes had four options on the decal sheet, one of which is the aircraft from the Ling Coping Museum. There doesn't seem to be much info on the AA model's vac-formed kit of the J21A, but the Heller kit is liked by pro builders. And the special hobby kit with PE, injection moulded and resin cast parts is said to be a really good reproduction of the J21A and the J21R Goblin jet-powered version, but not for the beginner as it's a limited run model. The star of the bunch, however, seems to be the 48-scale pilot replicas kit being highly recommended by the pro builders but a little overpriced for most pockets. That's the uh, inbox review finish for the Hella Saab J21. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, thanks for tuning in. If there's any questions, queries, anything to add, just pop them in the comments slip. I'll try and get back to you if, if it needs an answer. And uh, thanks for tuning in, lads, and I'll see you for the next one. May all your projects go smoothly. Bye-bye for now.